It's Monday, April 2nd, 2018. 2018. That's right. Think about it. Okay, stop thinking about it. Stupid. It's 2018. It's going to be that way all year. So quit thinking about it. Drive yourself nuts. Why do you people listen to me? I don't even listen to me. So what we're going to talk about in this uh, episode of Van Ren 10 on sports, we're going to talk about a little bit about the NCAA tournament, and we're going to talk a little bit about the NBA playoffs. We're going to peer into the future a little bit. So, first we'll do the NCAA tournament. The two games that I predicted, I got them right. Michigan beat Loyola of uh, Illinois, or Chicago, Arr! And uh, Villanova did beat Kansas. Now, when I filled out my bracket, I said Villanova would win the national title. So Villanova is the team I'm still picking. I'm still sticking by that pick. Uh, they're still playing incredible basketball. Villanova is a really good team. But Michigan's run, I said this in the last video, it is very reminiscent of that first championship they got with Ramil Robinson. They are hitting all the right notes at all the right times. I will not be surprised if Michigan pulls this thing off. Villanova is the one with all the pressure. They're the team that are supposed to win it. They're the team that had the number one seed. They have a lot of talent. They won this thing a couple of years ago. They're the team that's supposed to win. Uh, Michigan can play a lot looser. But I still think Villanova's got just enough to beat them. So my pick is going to stay Villanova. If Michigan wins, I'm fine with it. I love Michigan. So uh, I, I love the Wolverines. Uh, but I like this Villanova team too. I, you know, I like... Uh, they're, they're a good team. They don't do a lot of the, um, you know, the one and dones. They seem to, the coach there seems to look for players that aren't looking for just to play the one year in the NBA and then move on. He's looking for kids he can teach and that will stick around a little while. So he's done very good with this way. Uh, Michigan, I think, is along the same lines. But, you know, the way the NBA is, or the way the NCAA is right now, the really, really good players that probably could make the jump into the NBA have to play one year in college. And maybe I'll do a video on that one sometime. I'm hoping they change that rule. But now we're going to get a little bit into the uh, NBA playoffs. And the NBA playoffs <clears throat> aren't set by any means. Um, in the East, we almost have all of the playoff teams that are going to be there. Um, Milwaukee is four games four games up on Detroit right now. So I don't think Detroit's going to make it past uh, Milwaukee to get into that last spot. Um, so basically you're going to have Toronto, Boston, Cleveland, Philadelphia, Indiana, Washington, Miami, and Milwaukee. None of this is set in stone yet. My, uh, Miami and Milwaukee could still falter and Detroit could still get in, but like I said, Detroit's four games out, and you got five games left. So it's going to take an epic failure on one of those two teams for Detroit to sneak in. They're going to have to at least lose at least four out of five to give uh, Detroit a chance. And Detroit's got to win out. Now, if the playoffs, if the season ends today, the playoffs go like this. Toronto takes on Milwaukee in the first round. Boston takes on Miami. Cleveland would take on Washington, and Philadelphia would take on Indiana. Um, right now, I think I am so not sold, and I want to be sold on Toronto. I really do, because everybody keeps saying, "Well, they don't, you know, they don't have enough." We've seen this before. Toronto has really good regular seasons, and they don't do as well in the postseason. And you're not in a tough conference. The East really only has LeBron James. Boston's teams are injured. Kyrie Irving is injured for Boston. So, you know, Boston's team without Hayward, without um, Kyrie Irving, that's a thin team. Now, Kyrie might be back for the playoffs. But 
<laughs> I don't know if it's going to be enough coming off of an injury. Um, but with Lowry and DeRozan, they have two all-stars, but they don't have a superstar. I want to like Toronto, uh, but Ibaka has to play better in the postseason um, than he has in the past. Maybe back when he was with, I think Ibaka was with the, um, uh, I think he was with the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder. But they Toronto picked up Ibaka to be a really good big man for them. And he, I don't think he's quite lived up to the money that they're paying him. Um, but I don't know if Toronto has, I just don't know if they have the horses. I want to think they do, but I think Milwaukee might be able to upset them. Uh, I think that Giannis uh, Atetokempo, uh, is, he's a really, really good player. And he is a superstar. You know, the Greek freak is a superstar. And when you get into the playoffs, sometimes it's the superstars that can uh, advance you through the uh, series. Whereas two all-stars versus one superstar... Um, I think Giannis can really be the difference, um, and I'll, I'd probably predict this right now. If, if, if we go into the season right now, if we started the playoffs right now, I might pick Milwaukee to beat them in a seven-game series just because of the one superstar facing two all-stars. Uh, but if Ibaka plays really well, then Toronto might smoke through them in four games. Um, and that, I think, is going to be the real key to Toronto either struggling with Milwaukee or just crushing Milwaukee. Now, remember, uh, right now, Miami and Milwaukee both have the same record, so they could flip the script, and you could end up with Miami going against Toronto. And I don't think Miami has enough. To, an old Dwayne Wade is not enough uh, to beat Toronto. I think Toronto does. If I'm Toronto, I don't want Milwaukee. I would much rather Miami slide into the eighth spot so that I can play them. Or I want Boston to take the top spot in the conference so that I can slot in. Wherever, Mil wherever Miami is, that's where I want to be. I want to be their opponent. I don't want to face Milwaukee. Because I'll tell you right now, if Boston does not have at least a healthy Kyrie Irving, if they all they have is basically Tatum left, then Milwaukee could beat the Milwaukee could beat the Celtics too. Um, you know, I'm I'm sorry, Boston. It's like without Kyrie Irving and Hayward, and you're going with the the kid. You might not be able to beat the Greek freak either. Um, Cleveland's Cleveland because of LeBron James, and I'm still I'm right now. They would face Washington. I think Beal, uh, Beal and Wall. They don't get along that well. They're not, and they they're. They just don't play real well in the playoffs anyway. I, I just don't see Washington as a threat to anybody. They're going to get eliminated first round. They'll probably lose in four or five games to Cleveland. Philadelphia should beat Indiana as long as Joel Embiid is healthy. In the playoffs, you don't usually play. I don't think you play back-to-backs, which means um, Embiid, if he's healthy, he'll be able to play every game. I know he has the broken face. You put a thing over You put one of those masks over it, and you get out there and you play. But Embiid, is a, a, he's a special player, and they got a lot of talent on that team. So I think Philadelphia would beat Indiana. But ultimately, out of the East, Cleveland. Cleveland's coming out of the East. LeBron James will will that team to the conference finals. I just, I just believe that. That's as of now. You know, if any big injuries happen between now and then, of course, I'll change that. When we the, get to the playoffs and everything is locked in place, all the seating, then I'll do a little bit more on this. This is just kind of a quick overview. Um, in the West, right now, Denver and the Clippers still have a chance to get in, but I don't think either one of those teams deserves to be in. I am a Nuggets fan. I love my Nuggets. But if they go in against Golden State or Houston, they're going to get destroyed in that first round. I'd rather see New Orleans get destroyed in the first round by Houston. Let them go get killed. Uh, Golden State, uh, the, the teams that really aren't going to have any chance, Oklahoma City, Utah, Minnesota, New Orleans, they're going to get eliminated in the first round. Oklahoma T City and San Antonio, actually, if Oklahoma City and San Antonio face each other and Kawhi Leonard's not there, I'll predict Oklahoma City gets past them. 
I'll say that the five seed beats the four seed. Without Kawhi Leonard, I think that Westbrook, Anthony, and George will have just enough to sneak out a seven-game series against San Antonio. Um, Portland, Utah, that is such a boring series. That series, name me any, name me too many players on either one of these teams and, you know, name the starting lineups for both these teams. If you're a diehard NBA fan, you might be able to do it. I can't do it, but I'm not a diehard NBA. I'm more of an NFL guy than I am an NBA guy, but I do like the NBA. Um, but Portland, Utah should be a good series though. It should be a good series. That, that, that'll probably go six or seven, but I'll still give the nod to Portland. Golden State facing Minnesota. As long as Golden State's got all its guns, it'll get by them in four or five. If uh, Golden State is missing one or two of its weapons, Minnesota will give them fits. Carl Anthony Towns is legit, and he will give Golden State fits, but I still say Golden State. No matter what, Golden State's getting out of that first round. Houston versus New Orleans, you know, I like Anthony Davis, but Houston will have way too much firepower. Um, so I'll pick Houston there. Now, who's going to get to the finals? As of now, if I am looking at the West, I am still going to say Golden State gets out of the West. Now, Houston is having a great season. Chris Paul, Harden, they're having a great season. But we have seen this before. A Mike D'Antoni system plays really good in the, in the regular season. But when they get to the postseason, they falter big. We've seen teams that had, I think it was, I think it was Steve Nash and like Cedric Sabalos and people, super talented teams. There were lots of good players and Steve Nash is really great player hall of famer absolutely but his team's always got eliminated in the playoffs somewhere did not win the championship ever d'antoni's never won one his teams win a ton of games they just don't win championships uh mike d'antoni is uh, basically he's like um george carl Great regular seasons. I know George Carl was the Nuggets coach when we had Carmelo Anthony and Allen Iverson. We won like 55 games one season. We looked phenomenal. We got against the Lakers and Kobe Bryant, and uh, they kind of smacked us around a little bit and brought us back to reality. And, you know, Iverson towards the end of his career, Carmelo starting to kind of find himself, but he was doing a lot of... Even Carmelo back then, he was really looking to, to Iverson to shoot. I remember watching a lot of the games and going... He wants Iverson to shoot the ball. So I think Carmelo, out of respect, was kind of always saying, you know, he always considered Iverson kind of the first option. But in 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 this landscape, I think Houston will get eliminated again. I don't think they're going to to make the finals. I think they're going to fall in the same trap they always do. But here's how Houston can get to the finals. Houston can get to the finals as long as Golden State is missing at least one of their weapons. They've got to be missing either Draymond, Thompson, Durant, or Curry. If they're missing any one of these four when they face off in the conference finals, then Houston should be able to beat them. If Golden State has their full complement of stars, and I'm not even saying that all their stars have to be 100% healthy. They just have to have a full complement of their stars. If they have all four guys... Playing minutes, Golden State will make the finals. And it'll be Golden State versus the Cleveland Cavaliers. Early prediction. To me, I think LeBron has just enough firepower, just enough left in that tank. He knows this is probably his last great run. 15 years in the league, he's playing like a beast, a man possessed. Right now, as of right now, as of April 2nd, 2018, I am going to say the Cleveland Cavaliers will win the NBA title. LeBron will get his fourth. And with all that being said, to the troops, past, present, and future, thanks for the freedom.